How are we doing? It is Sunday, February 27th, a little after 10 a.m. And it's about, I don't know, 40, I think 46 degrees or something like that last time I checked. Um, little music there, some electric light orchestra. Telephone line is the name of the song. Um, one of their many hits from the 70s throughout the 80s. Very unique sounding band. Um, I, I wouldn't begin to guess who their influences are. I would say definitely the Beatles. Um, very unique though, very, uh, um, definitely a sound of their own. Um, the uh, background vocals and stuff, there's just, you know, there's certain bands out there that you can really tell they have their own style and they're certainly one of them. I'm gonna start this off like I start most of these with the positive affirmation drink. I've got my coffee here. I'll give any of you a second to grab yours if you'd like. It's real easy how this works. Um, I have a little, kind of like a toast, um, and just say the, the phrase, attitude is everything before taking a drink. Like I said, I'll give other people if you want to join me for that, I guarantee you to make things better. Um, get you some attitude adjustment, a little uh, positiveness in your life. Some, uh, what do they call those, endorphins. Some, try to get some of that negativity out of there. When you wake up every day, you got a choice on how you can look at the world. I say we try to be positive and make the best out of it. Um, there's always going to be adversity and good and bad things that happen. Um, but I think it's really important to, for whatever's going on in your life, that your outlook, if it's positive, it can make life better, make it better for you, make it better for the people around you. And, um, you know, why not be a positive force in the world as opposed to otherwise, if, if, if you can. Like I said, it's, we're all human and we all are prone to failure as you will see as I <clears throat> unfold what I'm gonna talk about a little bit more. Um, so if, without much further ado, if you've gotten your drink, on the count of three, one, two, three, attitude is everything. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice, still pretty warm cup of coffee. I've actually started on my second pot. Um, I got up pretty early this morning. I went, went to bed pretty early yesterday. My sleep patterns are still a little erratic. It was weird. I got up fairly early yesterday and did some things and then, and I was just wiped out by, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, took a nap for a while and then woke up for a little bit and then just continued, uh, you know, probably after a few hours, woke up and then uh, continued to just kind of laze around, listen to some podcasts and uh, watch a little, some videos and stuff like that. And all the way until about 4.30 this morning. Got up and did my little stationary bike routine. So the 30 day drinking challenge. I um, sadly have to say that I did not make it. I got very close. I got to day 26, which would be the 23rd of February. And I just, um, I don't even know. It was a rough day. Things happened at work. Um, I wasn't seeing the results I was hoping to see from quitting. Um, no weight loss gain whatsoever uh, that I could tell. Um, felt a little better, but not the big gains that I hope I was making. I would say the only improvement I really saw is, um, I, I think I slept more, which I probably needed to do. I have a, uh, a sore on my ankle that definitely looks much better. It's not a hundred percent healed yet. It's uh, it's weird. It was a couple of years ago. I started, there was a, like a bump under my skin and, uh, uh, I 
for those of you who don't know, I've got this condition called gout. It's a type of arthritis. Um, and I figured it was probably calcium deposits because that's kind of how the gout works. It gets in your joints and stuff like that. So around my ankle, just above my ankle level, I had this hard spot. Never hurt or anything, but you, it was noticeable. You could see it. I remember I was sitting in the office one time and someone pointed it out to me. I, I already knew, but so, I mean, it was semi-visible, but didn't bother me much. But then uh, it started to uh, turn into a sore and it got pretty bad. I did the worst thing you can do, mess with it a bunch. Um, went to, I ended up going to doctors about it. Um, have insurance at the time, because it was right after I moved here. They could find no reason uh, why it was happening and put me on some antibiotics. Didn't really seem to help much. And it's just something I've been messing with off and on uh, for quite a while. Um, you know, he took x-rays, everything. There was no foreign object in there. To me, it seemed kind of like a boil or that sort of thing, which I got some of those when I was a kid. And I thought maybe there was just a, what they call a core in it that needed to be removed. But like I said, the doctor that I saw, and I'm not, this is why I hate going to doctors because you never seem to get conclusive, clear answers anymore, especially a primary doctor anymore. Um, it's not really their fault. I think that they just uh, are scared to diagnose or, you know, they always want to send you to specialists nowadays. And that's unfortunately, it's just the nature of the business. Um, you know, when I was a kid, my family doctor did everything. I delivered babies. Um, I was talking about those boils I had. He lanced one for me. I mean, he was just an all around kind of deal. And now it seems like your primary gets you in, checks your blood pressure, maybe request to run some labs and then send, wants to send you off to a specialist for just about everything. But that's just an observation. Um, another thing that didn't seem to be happening from the drinking is, a, as I was mentioning, my arthritis. I've really been battling with it really bad. My joints, my range of motion. Um, first, this hand was swollen up. It's, I don't know if you can tell. It still looks as swollen. Here I have a knuckle that's been deformed from the arthritis um, over time. It looks pretty bad right now. Um, but this hand, it got really, it was huge for a while. It's better. Um, I couldn't play guitar. I couldn't, it was very painful. I was slamming Advil like they're going out of style. And as soon as that started to get better, this elbow started bothering me and my range of motion on that. And I was really hoping that cutting back on alcohol was going to, uh, help improve that situation. Uh, gout is allegedly very diet related. Um, so I just assume cutting down those sugars and carbs and other things would help improve, um, what was going on with my joints, but really didn't seem to make much a difference at all. Um, I, so I got frustrated by the whole thing. And like I said, I had a crazy day at work, very frustrated. I had some other ones too early on. I certainly feel like I could have made the 30 days, but just all the um, lack of improvement that I was seeing, I was really hoping to lose some weight. I was really hoping for my arthritis to get better. Um, and that sort of thing, the fact that that wasn't happening, I got, I just got frustrated. Uh, went out. Thursday night, I know, what was that, a Wednesday night? I can't really see, let me look here. The 23rd was a Wednesday. I think, did I go out Thursday also? I can't even remember. I think I went out three nights in a row after that. And then went and had brunch yesterday with, uh, had some champagne. I didn't get tanked any of those nights. I just kind of, uh, and I actually walked to the bar, which is, probably a mile and a half from my place just to get some exercise in on a couple occasions. I've been doing this, uh, keeping track of my steps with the app on your phone. <clears throat> and I've been trying to get at least 10,000 steps a day. And it's a little bit, of, I'm cheating a little bit. I, I probably mentioned this in other video. I have an exercise bike 
that I ride in the morning and I have that in my pocket. <clears throat> so I, you know, automatically knock out 5,000 steps a day, uh, you know, for the day before 6 a.m., 6, 7 a.m. often. Just by doing that. There was one day when I did not, when I missed the riding the bike, I, I had to leave or I, I didn't have time to do it. And I made sure to still get my steps in. It's, uh, um, I'm not sure which way you burn more calories, the bike or the walking. They, I don't seem to notice too much difference. One is, seems, I don't know, walking an hour, riding a bike for an hour, I get, I, I think they're probably even out, to, at least at the pace that I keep. Um, you know, I'm pretty moderate, pretty low pace with my bike. I just kind of do it to get some blood flowing. Uh, every now and again, I'll step up and try to raise my heart level some by, you know, pumping it out. Um, I do think I saw some improvements in my vision a little bit from not drinking. Uh, there would be some days I'd get up and uh, things would be a little blurry or I'd have double vision and stuff like that. I'm not exactly sure what's going on if I'm maybe at the beginning stages of diabetes or something like that, high blood pressure. That's another thing that did seem to improve from cutting back on drinking or not drinking was uh, I often would wake up with my ears ringing in the morning and I was told that that's probably due to high blood pressure. Definitely saw a difference in that um, phenomena. I didn't, uh, it would still be slightly, but definitely much better than uh, what was going on. So overall, I am very disappointed and uh, I don't wanna say upset. Uh, it was, it's silly, it was only, uh, like I said, it was day 26. It was only four more days to go. And uh, for whatever reason, I just was like, eh, whatever. Just wasn't a big deal to me uh, anymore to try to do it. So where I go from here, I really don't know. I did post some uh, before pictures and then tried to take a picture daily of uh, my waist and uh, with my shirt off to see if there was any improvement. I will put uh, today's picture and the first day's picture, but to me, I don't really see a whole lot of, uh, maybe a little bit, a whole lot of improvement. Uh, like, like I said, like I was hoping to. I don't know if I just up my calories by not drinking or my metabolism slowed down a lot because I'm older. It's, it's really hard to say for sure, but uh, definitely not the results I was waiting or that I was hoping for. Maybe I was just got impatient as well. You know, things, a lot of things in life are a process. So we'll see. Um, the plan for now is to, uh, you know, bike week is coming up. I'm definitely gonna go to that uh, in Daytona, Florida, uh, Daytona Beach. I'm going to go on the 10th, 11th and 12th. Um, I'll actually be driving up the tent. So I'm going to spend a couple days out there. It's, it's a probably, it's a little bit of a hike from here. It's 10 hour drive if you drive it fast. So I'll, I'll probably take me about 12 hours to get out there. I'm going to load my bike into my truck and go. I don't ride it enough to, uh, make that trek on the bike. With, um, I don't think. So I'm just going to throw it in the back of the truck and go out there. Um, but I'll definitely probably partake in some, a little bit of drinking there and um, look up some old friends and that sort of thing. Uh, bike week kind of got in my blood by living in Daytona and it, it may be something I do every year from now on, I'm not sure, but I'm looking forward to going. It's, uh, I've got, sort of got a place set up to stay, uh, a driveway of an old landlord. Um, he told me I could at least park there and I can either sleep in the back of or inside the cab of my truck, depending on the weather. And uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes from there. Like I said, it's gonna be a, a, a two day deal for the most part, so with squeezing some sleep in there from the long drive up. And then, so the, the plan is to head out Friday evening and come back semi early Sunday, uh, 10th through the 12th, I guess that would be 
13th. So I got, I'm looking forward to that. Um, hope I don't wear myself out too much with those. I would love to go and spend the whole week out there. I just don't have the time right now or the money to be honest. And, um, what else is going on? That's really it. Um, I'm trying really hard not to be too hard on myself about this drinking thing. Um, but I am upset with myself for, for not making it the full 30 days. I don't even know exactly why I did it. It was, it was just kind of like a, a, an effort moment. You know, I just, uh, for whatever reason, uh, didn't seem like it was worth the time anymore. Like I said, I was very frustrated. Um, I do want to talk about negative and positive, taking something, and I've talked a lot about this, and um, it really is the way you look at it. And the way I'm gonna prove that is with music today. I know it sounds kind of weird. I've been thinking a lot about this. So in music, you've got what they call minor chords, which are, they're, they're you know, let me see if I can move this down just a little bit so you can see the guitar a little better. You've got what you call minor chords, which are kind of sad. <laughs> That's a major chord, but let's say we're starting this. And then you got your major chords, which are a little happier. I don't know if you can hear the difference there. So I'm gonna show you something. There's a scale that you can use while playing minor chords. has a kind of a sad feeling to it, right? So now I'm gonna play a major chord and use the same exact scale and it's gonna sound happy or happier at least. It's kind of odd. note for note what I was playing. happy back to the sad sad now back so with that same scale to the happy Just one more time with the sad to the same scales. So 
So anyways, my point about that is, and I hope you could see what I'm talking about. Um, I don't want to say that that's attitude, but that is using the same scales, but looking at them in a different way, playing them over different chords to get a totally different mood. Um, and for those of you that know about music, the, um, I think they call it the natural minor scale is exactly the same as the major scale for a different, so like an E minor, the, is the major scale for G major. And that's getting kind of out in the weeds there a little bit. And I'm by any means no expert on scales and uh, chord patterns and stuff like that. I'm pretty self-taught, but I do know a little bit that uh, it's always been fascinated that you can use the same scales over uh, different chords and they still fit and sound harmon harmonious, I guess would be the word for it. But it's definitely a change of mood by the, uh, by the chord you use. So just a little lesson about sad and happy. Um, uh, seems a little silly and simplistic, but that, uh, I think that what I'm trying to make my point about is life is the same way. Do you wanna, do you wanna have that minor gloom chord to look at things or do you wanna use the happy chord? And maybe sometimes that minor chord is what you need um, to help you, um, you know, there are appropriate times when we do need to go through sadness and, and perspective and uh, the same with, uh, you know, other times maybe we need to, even though things are bad, we need to try to be as positive and look at them the best we can. Um, so, you know, you gotta deal with situations. Uh, we all deal with them a little bit differently. It's even interesting to me that these, some people equate these chords with sadness and some of them with happiness. It's, uh, it's really hard to say uh, <clears throat> if that's a condition we've been put through, you know, kind of the chicken before the egg type of thing is uh, are the minor chords sad because we've just learned to that uh, they're associated with sad events over time or is there something about them that really do that really does strike our emotions deep inside even from the very beginning um, it's uh, it's kind of odd I, I would say it's probably a little bit of both it's it's uh, strange how music can touch us touch your soul and uh, make a, uh, set the mood for something. You know, you could be in the same room and play different styles of music and it's, it's a, uh, uh, what my friend called, he said, it's like wallpaper. You know, it can definitely change the, uh, the, the ambiance or the mood of the room. Well, anyways, I think I'm gonna leave it there today. Um, like I said, I would be, lying if I didn't say I was a little bit disappointed in myself about the drinking thing. Um, but I'm not gonna sit and beat myself up about it. We're all human. Um, uh, and that's all, I, that's all I can really say about it at this time. Uh, anyways, very good for uh, joining. I don't even know, I'm not even stringing sentences together. That's how uh, discombobulated I am, I guess, with my emotions about this. Uh, it was, I felt, I kind of regretted coming on here and even having to say that I didn't make it. Um, Cause I do look at it as, as a failure in certain ways, in a lot of ways. It's uh, something I said I was gonna do and I didn't quite make it to the end. And uh, I am disappointed in myself because of that. Um, I can say I have my reasons or whatever, but it was, Definitely something that I set out to complete and it just didn't happen. May try it again at another time or, you know, just have to see. But thanks for watching. Very good to, uh, I still, even though this is a little bit of a sad thing for me, um, or like I said, I look at it as a, uh, just not looking at it very positively, that uh, I am so glad to be able to do these podcasts 
and I'm sorry if I disappoint anybody um, by not following through with what I said I was going to do. Human, um, all I can do is just do everything one day at a time. All right, thank you very much.